It's Friday, so that means it's Facebook Friday Q&A time here on OTR Essential. Thanks to those of you that took to the OTR Essential Facebook page and submitted your questions. This Q&A will be broken up into two parts, so this will be part number one. At the end, make sure you click on the link to watch part number two. Uh, most of your questions are probably answered between these two parts. Aaron Zach, do your coworkers watch your videos, and if so, do they talk about them? I don't think many of them do, and they really don't talk about them. People ask me about it occasionally and what I do on YouTube between this channel and the Schleg Daddy TV channel as more of a curiosity than anything else. They think it's kind of cool or they pretend it to be kind of cool and they really don't care. And I really don't care. I'm fine with them not watching, frankly, because I don't want to hear about it all the time. Uh, Dylan might as well be Schwartz. Would you be amused if Batista returned at the Rumble in the final two or him and Reigns? The crowd roots for Batista this time, but Reigns wins opposite of last year. I'd laugh at that, but that wouldn't happen. If Batista came back at the Rumble, he was the final two along with Reigns. Uh, people just boo the result out of the building and boo that out of the building, period. So I don't think you would get that. But yeah, would I get some kicks out of it? There's no question about it, especially with the Daniel Bryan explosion on the Internet. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? Ronnie Lewis at the last... World Cup final. There were 15,000 people behind the goals. Can you name them? I don't know what the fuck type of question this is, but I'll name it very simply. I don't give a fuck. Look, soccer is fun to play in person. Soccer is okay to watch in person, but watching it on TV is absolutely boring to me and it's a drizzling shit. So before you get your soccer balls of fire ablaze, Mr. European saying, oh my god, I can't believe you said that. How ridiculous and inconsiderate of him, soccer is the most popular sport in the world, the most widely played sport in the world, and the most watched sport in the world. And as a result, this silly little American buffoon and all of his American arrogance doesn't understand, doesn't get the greatest game in the world. Oh my god! Look at that new new tie! What an explosive action from that midfielder in his short pants! Let's have a bunch of pussy fouls! And then come up with even more ridiculous over-the-top goal celebrations because, by God, we might only get one goal scored in four games, so let's celebrate them. I'm just, just teasing. Soccer ain't my deal, man. Sorry. Never has been, never will be. You enjoy it, that's great, but I'm not going to sit there every four years as an American and pretend that I give a fuck about soccer in the World Cup. At least I'm true to who I am, all these like phonies. Oh, my God, the World Cup, it's America. You don't give a shit the rest of the fucking time. Shut the fuck up. Kerry and George, would the IWC welcome an Orton versus Lesnar feud for WrestleMania? I personally would love to see that match happen at Mania. Well, it's funny when people are thinking about Cena versus Lesnar, all of a sudden Orton, or Orton versus Lesnar becomes an incredibly appealing option and people want to see it. Now, of course, that Daniel Bryan is back. Everybody's so fixated on this guy winning the fucking Rumble, which I still believe is stupid. I do indeed, and I won't back away from that. So many people being caught up on the Daniel Bryan stuff. As a result, anything else other than Bryan versus Lesnar is probably going to get pruned to be an incredibly bad idea for the WWE, in, in, in theory. I mean, Orton versus Lesnar should work. I still think there's an appeal to having Orton winning the 2015 Royal Rumble. I really do. I think you can make just as strong, if not stronger, of a case for him as you could for Daniel Bryan, especially when it comes to facing off against Brock Lesnar. So there you go. I mean, either way, you could do it with Brian or do it with Orton, frankly, if I'm being honest here, because to me, at the end of WrestleMania, it should be Seth Rollins that's the champion at this point, at this particular moment, based off of the way things are being positioned, way they're being presented, way they're being done. I think that's the best, most effective thing that they can do. So you could do it either way with Brian or Orton. I just think Orton Lesnar might be the potentially more compelling matchup, in my opinion. Uh, Phil Shabber, why didn't Rollins cash in on Monday night after knocking Lesnar unconscious with the curb stop? Because that would be a paying attention to details. That would be the WWE forgetting about that fact that he was a Money in the Bank briefcase holder. That would be them forgetting about the fact that this would be something that would be an incredibly important detail to mention, in particular to sell the fact that not only can Seth Rollins win the belt one way at the Royal Rumble, he's got two ways and two avenues to potentially win it. Even if he just teased it but didn't actually have him do it. Imagine how many more narratives that potentially advances heading into the Royal Rumble. I mean, it was an incredibly missed opportunity. He's gotten rid of both Cena and Lesnar, and he's standing there, and he's just talking. Cash in the fucking briefcase. At least try. Fuck the Rumble. Why not win the belt now?
I'm just saying, seriously, why not win the belt now? And as far as, well, he could ca win it cashing in, or does he need to? Why even bother using the briefcase to have him win? Just saying. But if you're going to do that, then why not just do it right there? That would seem like a sensible thing. Luke Wynn Staley, do you think it's true Stephanie has a pussy like a canoe boat? Um, my guess is that you wouldn't know whether to finger her or get in her in a row. Or, wow, really? Maybe the macho man left a legacy there. Uh, maybe that's why she can't give God sons. Maybe that's why God can't put sons in her. I don't really know, but holy shit, I don't know where that came from. Alex Inyahosa, since the WWE is keeping Barrett heel, would there be any interest in maybe creating a Barrett Bryant feud leading into WrestleMania? No. No. Interest level on that? Eh. Absolutely not. Moises Enrique, do you see The Miz being a world champion again? Uh, yeah, at some point in time. I don't think it'll happen anytime soon, although, as I talked about before, I believe The Miz can be the WWE's MVP in 2015, and as a result, I could make an argument for him being the champion at some point in time in 2015. Uh, so let's see here. There's a question about the TV14 rating that I'll be talking about in another video soon. So any of you that ask questions about the TV14 rating, I'll be addressing that soon in a video, so you just have to watch that one. See, that's called plugging something else. Jose Gonzalez! Would it be smart for the Bears to trade for a higher draft pick for Jameis Winston? Um, they have to explore the possibility of moving up to get either Winston or Mariota. They do, because this might be the closest they'll come in the next few years to being in a position to get a potential franchise quarterback. And I'm not guaranteeing that Winston or Mariota are going to be that guy, but I'm also not guaranteeing that they're not going to be that guy. Now, in terms of trading up to pick one or pick two, that's probably not possible, not very likely, and most certainly not a price the Bears are going to be willing to pay as an organization, especially after so many years of crappy drafting. Whether it was under Angelo or Emery, didn't matter. It all resulted in the same level of suck. However, if you got to a point where Winston and or Mariota somehow were available at pick four, pick five, uh, then the Bears really have to strongly consider rolling the dice and making that move, in my opinion. Especially if it didn't it didn't lead to them having to give up a first-round pick in the 2016 NFL draft. Uh, they'd have to make that move because they have to move on from Cutler. The sooner the better. And the only way that's going to happen is if they have an alternative in-house, especially a young alternative. The Bears need a full and total complete rebuild. And as a result, you need to build around a quarterback that you draft. It's that simple. Uh, Tim Solomon, should TNA do special episodes on TV like NXT does? I'm not really sure what you mean by special episodes. Are you talking about doing the pay-per-view-like shows on TV instead? I guess. Otherwise, I don't really know what you're referencing. Uh, Joseph Rowe, what's your favorite Daniel Bryan moment? And I would have to say a favorite Daniel Bryan moment is probably Occupy Raw. I, th I think that would be the moment where I sat there and kind of took notice and be like, yeah, you know, this WrestleMania season does really need to be about him or that he has arrived. That was kind of that moment. That was made for really good television. Uh, let's see here. Uh, two Loyal Dez asking another TV14 question. Like I said, I'll address that later. Brianna Stevens, do you think the WWE's racial issues include women as well? <clears throat> um, not as much. In the sense that at least they've given uh, several non-white women their top women's title. I mean, to be fair, um, in terms of the treatment, in terms of the types of characters they give them, yeah. I mean, you could see Naomi and Cameron being the Funkadactyls, and you could just imagine Vince and Kevin Dunn, you know, and Michael P.S. Hayes just having one big carrot circle jerk to that shit thinking that that's awesome. Yeah, that's what them, them hood rats, them ratchets do. They believe in the hip-hop and in the dancing and the backing that thing up. And, oh, my God, we are so hipping with it. Uh, so I, I see where you're getting at. I think the problem for the women in WWE is that they're women. It's more of a sexism issue than it is a racism issue, to be honest with you, though. Uh, Sean Anderson, what do you think would be the best possible swerve at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view? Honestly, having Rollins win the belt and not having to cash in the briefcase and you either just get rid of the briefcase or he keeps it as a backup plan so even if he loses, he's got an instant contract, an extra opportunity, would be a smart thing to do. Um, that would be the best possible swerve because a lot of people might envision Rollins winning it but having to cash in to do so. Why not have him win straight up clean? There you go. Christian Guillen. 
What if Seth Rollins was heading to WrestleMania as champion and Dean Ambrose won the Royal Rumble? It worked for a lot of people, but I don't think it's the best way for them to go. And frankly, we just got done with that feud a few months ago. Do we want to go right back up to that shit? Jeremy Ishmael is the whole thing or firing BS they are doing with Ryback, Rowan, and Ziggler. Just a WWE's excuse to use them as surprise entrance at the Rumble so they don't have to spend money on real surprises. Could be! Who knows? Could be, frankly... They don't know why the fuck they did it, and they don't know how the fuck they're going to bring it back to television. That's also very possible, too. Um, I think it was even just as much of an excuse of trying to create something for people to see, and then they figure out later as they go. That's more likely the uh, case, because that's typically how they operate. Joe Gutfeld, since Randy Savage is finally in the WWF Hall of Fame, WWE Hall of Fame, but whatever, uh, what do you think are his five greatest matches, and was he a better IC or world champion? Personally, I liked him better as IC champion. I think he's one of the truly great IC champions of all time. Um, I don't know about his greatest matches. Still, my favorite match of his of all time has probably got to be him and Warrior WrestleMania Seven. Personally, I think that's his best match, but that's just me. Uh, Chris Yak Parker, what were your thoughts when Hogan worked Philly at Bound for Glory 2011? Well, if you watch the old Off the Rope Show channel a couple of years ago, some of y'all remember this for months, starting I think it was like in May or June, even before they were really going all the way there with Sting and Hogan at Bound for Glory. I was pining for it. I was itching for it. I was bitching for it. I was begging for it. I was pleading for it. Uh, one of my big shticks every week in the Impact Reviews, you know, even more so than just assume Jeff Jarrett position because Jeff Jarrett sucks dick. Well, it's the fact that I wanted Sting, Sting versus Hogan at Bound for Glory. And I finally got it. And it happened. And what a glorious match it was. All of those so-called Smart Mark fans in Philly that were going to poon and crap all over this instead got sucked into the moment and realized how much fun it was and what professional wrestling used to be. And it was the match of the night. Yeah, the fucking shit was awesome. But also represented TNA on so many different levels. The Rusty Gillespie, should The Rock have one more match or no, and do you even care at this point? Um, the answer to both of those, frankly, is I'm not sure, if I'm being honest. Uh, Paul Timas, is Marcus all the best center in the NBA? If not, who is? If you classify Anthony Davis as a center, he might be the best. Um, is most certainly not Dwight Howard. <laughs> uh, I, you made maybe a small argument for Gasol. I mean, he's, a, he's a hell of a player. Uh, Connor Devine, do you see a situation with Cena winning the triple threat and getting one over on Lesnar only for Rollins to cash in straight away? Yeah, that's a very likely scenario. Uh, Cena's going to make sure that he gets his. Cena then's going to be engaged in the feud with Rollins where Rollins doesn't cash in or doesn't beat him clean for it. He wins in a bullshit fashion, so that way Cena's got himself another main event at the pay-per-view next month at Fastlane. That's very, very possible and, in fact, very likely what they might do. Uh, Daryl McWoods, last question for part one of this Q&A. Excuse my fantasy booking, but wouldn't it have been nice for Danny Bryan to return, still claiming to be WWE champion, similar to the old HBK storyline back in the day? Not particularly. Not particularly. I guess some would like that, but I particularly wouldn't. So, Anyways, thanks you guys that submitted your questions for this part one. I'll put the link for part number two, excuse me, right here. So now you can go click on that and watch part two of this Facebook Friday Q&A here on OTRS Central.